Okay, hi there, welcome to a micro video. Uh, this is a short essay plan looking at uh, this question using applied examples of your choice. Examine two factors that might limit the monopoly power of a business. So in this video, we'll look at two examples of knowledge application and analysis paragraphs and then two separate evaluation paragraphs to go with it. Crucial thing here is to separate the two and build good chains of reasoning. So using applied examples, examine two factors that might limit the monopoly power of a business. Well, first of all, we need to think about monopoly power. So my first analysis um, paragraph is about monopoly uh, power. Uh, firms with monopoly power, such as Coca-Cola, have over 40% of the market for carbonated drinks. They have scope to keep prices higher than if they face more intensive competition. Uh, the existence of barriers to entry in the market, such as strong brand loyalty and patents, copyright protection, also mean that these abnormal profits persist in the long run, generating higher returns for shareholders. Brand loyalty makes the demand for firms' products more price inelastic, and this allows a business to set prices higher and extract consumer surplus, turning it into producer surplus. So that's the idea of monopoly power, but... One constraint to monopoly power can be the role played by industry regulators who might act as a, a surrogate competitor in markets. So the role of the regulator is emphasised in this, in this section. A good example in the UK is the energy price cap that Ofgem, the Office for General Energy Markets, has introduced on electricity and gas suppliers in what is an oligopoly. A price cap constrains what a firm can charge, which again in theory leads to lower prices and a reduced level of super normal profits. I'll show you the analysis diagram in a second. We can see that total profit is lower and output higher than under a single price profit maximizing monopoly. The impact of a price cap depends on how low the ceiling is set and whether suppliers respond by successfully cutting their fixed let's just change that there we go their fixed costs and variable costs to protect profit margins. And here's the analysis diagram that goes with it. Uh, it's one of those more complicated diagrams showing a fairly inelastic demand. The normal profit maximising price is P1, but the regulator, in this case Ofgem, might cap the price at a lower level, shown by the green price there. You can still make a profit, but the profit is lower than it would have been in the, in the absence of a price cap. <clears throat> Some industries... A second uh, point, in some industries, monopoly power is strong because established firms, sometimes known as the incumbents, they can take advantage of internal economies of scale, which lowers their long and average cost and gives them a significant cost advantage over a smaller rival or potential entrant. Economies of scale can lead to higher profits, making it difficult, making it tough for competitive businesses to successfully enter industry. good example is banking. So I'm here, I'm bringing some financial economics in. The big banks, Barclays, Lloyds, HSBC, all of whom under normal economic circumstances make, make significant profits of hundreds of millions of pounds every year. <coughs> there are some challenger banks, such as Metro Bank, good applied example, but many of those newer operators are finding it hard to grow quickly enough to become a genuine threat to the incumbent operators. If these banks make little impacts, then commercial banks with market power can continue to offer fairly mediocre interest rates for savers and charge quite a, a lot for personal business loans. So, you know, in some industries such as banking, the established firms really do have market power and that can uh, that, that's there to be exploited. However, evaluation point, although economies of scale can give established banks a built in advantage, Market power can be eroded by the impact of new technology. I'm staying with the financial se uh, sector here in this example. Uh, an example can be seen in retail banking with the success of businesses such as Starling. And uh, one that's particularly interesting for teenage economists, the app-only bank Monzo. That's the fastest growing bank in the UK. It's got over 2.5 million customers. They're aiming to get over 3.5 within the next year or so. Now, many of these challenger firms, the challenger banks such as Monzo, they operate with a different business model 
Um, and they compete aggressively, particularly in price and non price terms, by targeting better what larger firms might have ignored. They keep their costs relatively low. They try to avoid disincomers of scale or X inefficiencies, and therefore they are better able to, to stick in the market particularly during those difficult early years. In many sectors, technological change is reducing barriers to entry for smaller businesses, many of whom can, can uh, if you like, piggyback on platforms such as Amazon Web Services to sell direct online to customers. If entry barriers are lower, then the market becomes more contestable and therefore monopoly power, which is in the question, is diminished. A couple of key exam takeaways. One is developed analysis diagrams are a superb support to our top answer. It is well worth well, worth working on your diagrams. And I've got uh, a, a little cluster of videos on the YouTube channel with all the key diagrams you need for A-level, micro and macro. Just, just check those out. And secondly, always look to build your own contextual knowledge. You've got great class notes, presumably. Always be looking to add to your contextual knowledge so that you can impress the examiner when they're marking your script with the depth of your awareness.